Hey everybody, this is Dr. Keith with Dads for Life, and this is our month a monthly. No, it's our Monday weekly Zoom meeting for parents. You know, Dads for Life just loves to increase the, the value of a parent so that parent can increase the value of a child. And that's what Dads for Life is all about. We are have a special guest with us which we are going to introduce to you in just a moment. This guy, just, let me tell you what, he just is right there at the top of my chart when it comes to dads. And he is an awesome, awesome guy. And we're going to be learning more about his life and how he became uh, the, the movement, in my opinion, that, that, that Dads for Life is so taken by, first of all. But so many people out there that appreciate what my friend Garth is going to be talking about tonight. So let's go ahead with the preliminaries. This is my host down here in the bottom. This is Miss Ariel Wheeler from Australia. Welcome. Welcome, Ariel. Hey, everyone. It's lovely to meet you. Thank you, Garth, for joining us this week. And Keith, what a great intro. Thank you for introducing us both. Oh, I'm so excited to be here today. I'm just in awe of this napkin guy and what he has to offer today. I'm just so excited to get started. So for some of you who don't know me, hey, I'm Ariel Wheeler, fan of iHerb Brand. I basically teach people how to get visible with the e-commerce business. But today we are really here about this napkin guy and what this <laughs> message is and how important it is to put a napkin in our child's lunchbox. But check this out, a message as well. Like, it's like, it's a no-brainer, but how awesome is that? Not only to pump up our kids, but to remind our children how important they are and how important they are in our lives. So I'm really excited. So welcome, welcome, Garth, and thank you for the introduction, Keith. Oh, sure, it. sure, no problem. And we love you too, Ariel. And Garth, this is how I'm going to introduce you, okay? First of all, I have my napkin. And it says, we love Garth, okay? <laughs> and the ministry that you have got going on. And uh, folks, we are with a very special guest tonight. This guy, and there goes my, I, my technical just went down on me, but here it goes. All right, it's back up. We had a, uh, I was going to show a little movie about you, Garth, but I don't want to take up the time right now. I want people, I want people to hear from your heart. We, uh, we have a short time on this window here and Periscope is joining us and Twitter and and we're going to send it out on our Facebook uh, pro, uh, uh, venue and everything shortly after this broadcast tonight. So a lot of people are going to hear about you. But <clears throat> I want to tell you, folks, that without too much introduction, because I want him to tell the whole story, we have uh, a gentleman that I came across of on the Internet. Uh, well, there's UK joined in. Hello. How are you, Mel? But uh, we have uh, Garth. Um, and Callahan coming in from uh, the napkin notes movement that he has started. And we are so excited to have him. But I tell you what, I came across, I came across Garth in a special way. And that was because I love the stories of great dads. I love to hear a dad that's on the move doing something for his kids. As you know, that Dr. Keith has been around uh, for a while now. And we're all over the world on the internet, and we are encouraging, enhancing, and enriching the lives of a lot of people. Well, we always say, start with your kids. And when I came across Scar's story, I tell you, I, I almost needed my own Kleenex because I love his story. And that's the truth. This gentleman, my friends, has got a story that is amazing. I'm going to let him take it on because I'll just go on all night about him. So I would like to introduce my guest, Mr. Garth Callahan from the Napkin Notes Dad Movement. Hello, Garth. Good evening. I, um, I, I don't even know how to, to, to try to follow up on an introduction like that. Um, I, and, and, and I'll be honest. Uh, when I started writing notes to my daughter, Emma, uh, it was in kindergarten, and, and there wasn't a purpose behind it, per se, right? So I, I was making her lunch, and we recognized as a family early on that a, a homemade lunch was important for us. Um, we felt that we could make something that was more nutritious, had better taste, and, and would most likely be eaten rather than thrown away. And... You know, there could have been just as easily put in a, a pudding cup or a cookie or a piece of candy as a napkin note. And it's, in the beginning, I wasn't purposeful. There wasn't a discipline to it. And it was just another thing. And um, 
And as my daughter grew older, I recognized that I was the working dad. And so I didn't get to spend nearly as much time with my daughter, Emma, as my wife, Lisa, did. Lisa was a stay-at-home mom and spent so much more time with Emma than, than I did. And, um, and so when I started writing the notes every day, to be honest, it was because I wanted Emma to love me a little bit more. Right. So I was, I was trying to, to get that insertion into her daily life because I couldn't see her for those extra eight or 10 hours a day. And, and, and I felt like I was losing that time. And, um, and sometime when she was, I'm guessing probably seven or so, um, I had finished making her lunch. She had come downstairs and um, scooped up her lunchbox and she looked in and realized there wasn't a note in her lunchbox oh, yet. Wow. Now I hadn't forgotten and I, I and I, it wasn't on purpose. I just hadn't gotten to it yet. I was, I was busy making lunches and whatnot. And she walked right up to me and held up her, her lunch bag right to my face and just said napkin note. Hmm. And so that's when I realized that these notes had meaning and that she was looking forward to those napkin notes every day. And man, what pressure did I feel at that point? Right. So I, I couldn't miss. Um, I had to be on point. I had to make sure that I was up in time to write a note. Uh, you know, there were, there were a couple of times where, you know, I forgot to put a note in um, and I drove it to school to make sure that she had a, a note in her lunchbox. <laughs> and, um, and right around the time she was in fifth or sixth grade, we noticed uh, she told us that her friends were going into her lunchbox to see what I had written for the day, even though she wouldn't look at it until lunchtime. And, um, and I think the pinnacle of all of this was in maybe ninth grade. In fact, I know it was ninth. I, I thought, oh, you know, I don't know if I can write a note anymore, right? She's older. She's in high school. Um, how is she going to feel about getting a note? And I went ahead and I did it anyway. And, um, she came home from school that day and she shared the story when she was sitting next to her friend at lunch and her friend asked, you know, what, what's going on with this napkin with the writing. And Emma explained that I, I wrote a note to her every day and I always made sure she had a note, a personal note that was special for that day in her lunch. And her friend turned to her and said, I am so jealous. Mm. And I thought, okay, this really is something you know, this is important and this is something that we do as a family. Um, so the, the, the interesting side story in the middle of all of this, um, which is how I've become known as the napkin notes dad, is um, in, in, actually in the last five years, I've been diagnosed with cancer four times. And um, after the third time, that was when it was serious. So my doctor started looking at me differently and they, they said things like, Hey, Mr. Callahan, you need to understand the mortality rate. And, and we started talking about things in a very different light. And, um, and in and amongst all of this, I'd had another surgery and, um, although the surgery was successful, there was indication that we were going to have long-term issues. And, uh, I happened to be on, on a flight down to Orlando and was reading an article in the um, in-flight catalog. And it was about this guy, this really awesome guy, Alex Sheen, who started this social movement called Because I Said I Would. And it was all about promises that you make in your life. And somehow my brain went from this article to uh, this implied promise that I had with Emma that I would always make her lunch and that she would always have a note in her lunch from me. Wow. And I start, I started to think that I couldn't make, I couldn't fill that promise because I wasn't going to be alive to do it. Um, the doctors were that serious with me. And, um, so I got out some calendars and looked up on my phone and counted up how many school days there were. And in the dark of night over the, over the next couple of, uh, couple of months, I wrote 826 napkin notes and wow. in case I, in case I died. So I had to, I had to think forward, 
you know, what is she going to need to hear as a senior? What would she need to hear as a junior? What would she need to hear as a sophomore? And write out all of these notes and put them aside just in case. Mm. Well, you know what? I, I, I just take it all in, Garth, every time I hear you talk about it, because I know it's still emotional somewhat, isn't it? It's, um, you know, what's really interesting is that um, because, because of how we are as a family, we're very supportive of each other. Um, we are somewhat sarcastic and humorous. Um, family. <laughs> and, and at this point, you know, I, I, I'm actually approaching my five-year anniversary of my first diagnosis. Wow. So living with cancer, and just to, to clarify to all of the viewers, I, I have two types of cancer right now. Um, one we, aren't, we are not treating, um, and one I'm treating with daily chemo, uh, but that chemo is not going to cure me. All it's going to do is keep the cancer from spreading or growing um, until it doesn't, right? So at some point in the future, it might stop working. Uh, so we, we're, this is such a new normal for us. Uh, it is when I, when I, when I sit down at an event like this and I actually take a moment to talk about it, that's when it hits home the most. Um, because normally we're, we're doing other things that everyday families do, right? We get up, we make lunches, people go off to work or to school dogs get walked, chores get done. Um, you know, we all come back to get together at the end of the day and have family dinner together. But uh, it's, it's really only once in a while that I take a moment and I glimpse the, the window into my own soul. And I realize, wow, you know, this is actually, number one, it's a pretty serious situation. Uh, but number two, how blessed are we that we have had this opportunity to really focus on what's important in life and to, uh, uh, you know, to have the privilege to share our story so that maybe other parents will do the same thing. You know, Garth, I, I want to get back to the soul part because I, I know a little bit more about that, that faith side of that. I just want to tell you that we, this story is just, it touches a lot of people. When I talk to them about it, they're going like, wow, that's a cool story. Well, this is more than just a cool story, folks. And let me reset. I am Dr. Keith with Dads for Life. And we are here with a straight talk parenting class tonight with Mr. Garth Callahan, who is talking about a, just an idea that he had to encourage his child. Because you know I'm always there to talk to you about encouraging your children. Because I've been doing it for a long time now. So I want you to just, I, I, I've got Periscope on the outside of my computer, Garth, and you are getting hearted up. Now, what, you know, you're familiar with, with Periscope, I'm sure, being a tech guy. I mean, lo people are loving you, okay? So, uh, and the viewers keep coming on and adding on, and they're sharing with Twitter. So you're getting a lot of attention tonight, even though it's not right here on our screen. So I want to just kind of defer to my friend, Ariel, out there in Australia. We don't want to forget her. And she is a lovely lady who has our own brand, special, uh, brand strategy company. And she is here to share your screen. But I think she may have a little question for you or two. Sure. I did. I would actually love to know some of the things that you wrote down on your napkin, on your napkin for your daughter. Oh, gosh. Um, so in the beginning, when she was younger, um, the notes were really, really simple, such as, I love you, have a good day, be a great friend to somebody today, things like that. Um, as she got older, there was this period of time where I was at a loss for words. And so what I did was I kind of borrowed from other people. Um, Dr. Seuss, Mr. Rogers, you know, I, I, I looked to the greats and I wrote down things that they had said. Um, you know, Dr. Seuss was a favorite of mine. Um, why, um, you know, gosh, you know, all of his great quotes are even failing me at this point, but, um, you know, I, I would look for these, these quotes that would be easily understood by children and things that would motivate her. Um, you know, oh, Dr. Seuss, like, why stand in when you were, why, oh gosh, what is it? Why stand in when you were born to stand out or something like that? Um, and so something that, th those were good quotes for five, six, seven, eight-year-old kids. Um, and then I realized that she was probably a little bit older than that. 
and the notes became a little bit more personal. Uh, I would say things like, dear Emma, I'm so proud of you. And then I would say why I was proud, right? So you can't just say I'm proud. You have to say why. And then, um, and then it's helpful if you can give a, a, an example of how you've seen that in action, right? So I'm so proud of how you play softball. You're a great sport and uh, you, you support your teammates and things like that. Uh, sometimes the notes are, honestly, they're just as much for me as they are for her, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now remember the guy who quit? Neither does anybody else. Um, and, and so what I'm trying to get across to her is this message of tenacity and self-worth. And you know, in the end, every note that I write to her, the purpose of it is, um, you know, what, can, what will she read today that could possibly make her a strong, confident young woman tomorrow? Uh, and we've kept track ever since this, this phenomenon came out, we kept track of every single note that I've written. We've taken pictures of every single note. We have these catalog. It's amazing. And, um, and every day I still sit down and think about, you know, what do I need to write today? Um, sometimes I borrow from the greats and I, I use a quote maybe once a week or so. Um, Emma's very artistic. So she likes things that are, a little bit there's some wordplay or some creative uh look to the napkin so i try to do that um in fact my favorite one is when i took a napkin and i i wrote um it's what's on the inside that matters and then on the inside of the napkin i wrote you're awesome so i made sure that she knew she had to open up the napkin and that was the trick with that with that particular napkin uh, and and part of me is you know i, I feel like i'm almost like a, a restaurant owner where you have to have a new special every day. And so every time I sit down and I look at a napkin, it's, I think to myself, okay, what's special about this napkin today? And, um, and those are the ones that get saved. And I can tell that those are the ones that matter. And I'm, I'm so thankful to have that, um, this relationship and the feedback from her on this because I know what napkins hit, hit home. And I know, okay, if this, if this was a good napkin, I should probably try to make one similar to it in the future. Mm. Well, nice. it really. Any, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. You go ahead. Yeah, sure. I was thinking, Gus, do you have any samples of your napkins there? Oh, I sure do. Use? I sure do. Hold on one second. I'll, I'll, um, I have the whole box of, of the 826 napkins. <laughs> oh, no. Wow. And Ariel, just so we'll be preparing to share his uh, website too. I think that's going to be cool. And you know, so Garth, we uh, Garth, I want to kind of bring you up to speed on something while we're doing that. Uh, I am sure. watching Periscope feed, and we have a lady in the UK that says she's been following you for more than a couple of years, uh, and and your ministry and what you're doing. And currently, while you're sitting there, I am in the UK. I am actually. Oh, wow. I am right now in Leicester, England, and heading towards London on Wednesday, uh, and I'm here for ministry and business. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to continue that journey for the next couple of weeks. And um, so we are excited about the, the things that are going uh, on here in the UK because I'm establishing some dad chapters here too. So they're going to start hearing about you and your ministry once I get some things going here in the next couple of days. So. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah so I, I have all of these napkins and, and I'm just looking through them. And in fact, here's, here's one, be a good friend to somebody today, right? That's, that's one that, that I reuse wow. because I think it's important. Um, you can't win a ball game on home runs alone. Um, most of us are as happy, are, most of us are about as happy as we make up our minds to be. Um, now, this is one that I really like, um, and I haven't given this one to her yet, but um, dear Emma, don't worry about pleasing everyone. And I think that's really important. Um, and in fact, I even have, um, I have napkins that she has written to me. Um, I have one here. Uh, it's a quote from Edgar Allan Poe. 
there's no exquisite beauty without some strangeness and proportion. And what's interesting is that I was going to Canada and she stuck this in my luggage and she drew a picture of a moose on it that is very strange in proportion. Uh, so she, you know, she's, she's writing napkin notes back to me. Um, and, and, and that tells me that it's working. Wow. That is really, really cool. Yeah. Ariel, why don't we share his website? Because I know there's another way that people can read a lot of those notes. Yeah, absolutely. I will just do a screen share for everybody and just let me know when you can actually see the screen. Oh, this is so exciting. And Garth, what we're going to do is we're going to share your website and like to have you navigate it for us, if you don't mind. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So um, the, this, this is uh, Napkin Notes, which is now, we're, we're calling it the 21 Days of Thankfulness. Uh, the reason why we're doing that is um, we have a, a Thanksgiving holiday coming up. And what we're looking to do is uh, we're asking our community, our online community, to commit to writing 21 days of, of notes between November 4th and November 25th. Uh, because we have a lot to be thankful for. And so um, we're, we've, we've completely revamped this, just centered around this. So you can go ahead and click on the enter site in the, in the middle of the napkin. Um, and here we go. And so this is, this is all about Emma and me. Um, so imagine a world where people wake up every day and um, what does it say? Oh, it's, um, um, here's a sample of one of our napkins. You believe, Emma, when I wrote this, Emma said, dad, you know, what, what if a kid sees this? What if, what if some seven-year-old sees this? And I thought, oh, that's, we're geared towards adult. Ho hopefully, hopefully only the adults will get this. But uh, dear Emma, you believed in Santa for all those years. You can believe in yourself for five minutes. P.S. I believe in you all of the time. And I think that's something really important for kids to understand that their parents are there no matter what. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I can't love Emma anymore mm. and I can't, I can't love her any less. Right. I love her. That, that that's end of statement. You can't qualify it. You can't quantify it. And no matter what she does, the, the love that I have for her, is going to be constant. And I think children need to know that. Um, and, and, I, and I actually think that that's very biblical as well. Uh, I, th I think that that's, um, you know, for me, a relationship I have with, with God is very similar in that he can't love me more or less. And he's not going to turn away from me. It's only me who turns away from him. Um, and once you kind of understand it in that perspective and, and you can build that relationship with your own child, it really changes the parenting paradigm. Mm. Uh, well, it does. And, um, you know, I'm looking right now at a comment that came in. It says that, that we can actually, um, you know, that, that one of our, our guests on, or one of our viewers right now, that her mom used to put notes in her lunchbox on special occasions. And she absolutely loved it, Garth. She says, I can't wait to start doing it for, or for my son to start reading so she can do it for him. So, you know, isn't, isn't that something, it really goes to show the power of, of a piece of paper and a pen and those notes are tangible. Um, and, and look, I, I love technology, right? I love my gadgets and gizmos. Um, but there's something about a handwritten note, even if it's only two sentences that carries so much more weight than a text message. It does. And, it does. It, and, and you get to hold on to it forever. Yes, you do. Uh, which is really important. Um, Show so us Garth. If you, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, no, you, you were about to ask me a question. I was just going to say, show us where we can find your book on here. Yeah. Oh, sure. Um, you can actually, um, right up at the top, you can go to uh, book uh, right in the middle. And then there are some links there um, and you can purchase um, the book 
at your favorite retailer um, here in the United States at amazon.com or Barnes and Noble. Um, it, the book is, you know, it's, it's weird to, to talk about this because um, we didn't, we certainly didn't intend uh, or start out with writing a book in mind. It, it came to us and um, uh, what's, what's pretty amazing is at this point, I think that it's been translated into about 14 different languages and oh, it's being sold around the world in everything from Dutch to Chinese. Mm. Wow, that is wow, awesome. Incredible. It is, isn't it? it it's, it's, it's awe. It, 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 in my mind, it's just so, um, so surreal. And frankly, uh, every time I open up a book and I get, or I open up a box from my publisher and I get to see a new translation, I, it brings me to tears. Mm. Well, I think that you are definitely reaching some people tonight. We have almost 50 people watching us live right now. Uh, this is going to be repurposed on several occasions, by the way. But I want to tell you that uh, in 2017, uh, I'll be uh, looking for some more resources to start uh, offering to dads, and I'll definitely get me some of your books because I think it's an awesome idea, my friend. I truly, truly do. Uh, because I believe that in, well, first of all, I see on your book, it says something about daily connections. Well, I just wrote, uh, finished up a book called Daily Connections and how I tried to get parents when I was a police officer in the schools as a school resource officer guard, I tried to get parents to connect with their kids. Duh, I never thought about notes, <laughs> but these were high school kids too. They might think that's a little, you know, sometimes, but, but as you built on Emma, you brought her up from what age did you start this? Was it kindergarten? We started in kindergarten, so she was a, a little over five, I think. And how old is she now? She just turned 17. Ooh. So you're going so, through that box, aren't you? <laughs> well, you know, um, I, she's a junior in high school. She's 17. She's driving now. She's driving herself to school, right? So all of these, you know, she has a boyfriend, we have all of these things that are going on and, and yet we still hold on to the, the one thing that has, has stuck in our family ever since she started school, which is that daily note. Um, you know, there was one time last year, I think it was maybe two years ago that um, I was too sick to get out of bed one morning. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, I, I have daily chemo. Um, I have good days and I have bad days. I have great days and I have really bad days. And this was not a good day. And um, I, I could barely, barely move at seven o'clock when I was supposed to be getting up and writing a note to, to Emma. And because of how ingrained this is into our family, my wife did exactly what you would expect her to do. She grabbed a pen and a blank napkin and found something to write on, the no on, on that note that day. And I'll tell you what, that note has, is by far our most popular note ever, right? So how, here I am, the napkin notes dad, and my wife sits down and out of, out of the gate, she hits a home run, grand slam home run. It's the best note that we've ever had and everybody loved it and, and, and as did Emma. And so, uh, but, but again, it's, it's because our family knows that this is something that we do. Right, so there would have to be really extenuating circumstances for us to not write the note. And it, it's important because Emma knows that for a few minutes in the morning, um, and especially back when she was younger, even before she woke up, I was writing these notes and I was thinking of her then. And so four, five, six hours later when she was at lunch, she was reading the note, thinking of us. And it's a really good cycle to put in. And it allows us both to take a few minutes out of our busy day and think about the importance of the other family member. Well, you know, you're more than just a note to your kids. I mean, this, this could go, I mean, in the workplace. I mean, this could go, I mean, a, a note given to your teacher, you know. I mean, a, a kid giving a, a note to a teacher or something could really help out maybe that great. But anyway, <laughs> you know, something <laughs> it's just a little bit of encouragement. And um, I just, I, 
I am just so taken back sometimes at, at what a little encouragement can do for people. So, um, and yeah, so I see a comment here. It says, will we also be on YouTube? We are going to put this on our YouTube channel, Garth, if that's all right with you, sir. Uh, we're going Absolutely. to continue to just, uh, just throw your message out there because I believe in it so strongly. Ariel, you got something for us? Yeah, absolutely. I love to hear some comments that are coming in on Periscope, Keith. Do you have any comments coming through on Periscope that well, we can share with Garth? We've got a lot of hearts coming in, but I, I just... <laughs> That's I, um, awesome. Um, but I, I, I see a couple of comments uh, that keep coming in from UK, and a lot of them are on Twitter, so I'm not getting them actually through Periscope. Uh, but I, I believe, in fact, I think we're having an issue right now with Periscope. But, you know, that's, that's technology, right, Garth? So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know, so, so as, you know, I, I wanted to, to kind of dovetail off of something you commented and then also let you know um, one other quick thing. Other, you, you commented about the daily notes not necessarily being just for parent to child. Uh, I really think that in today's hectic world that we all live in, mm. that, that – um, there's a really big opportunity for managers or business owners, you know, the leaders in our lives to take that opportunity and write a note to one of their employees and make that a regular practice. Um, you know, imagine if you're, imagine that you had a workplace where every manager had to write one short note to each of their direct reports once a week. Right, so maybe they have five, six, seven, eight direct reports. They have to write two sentences to each of their employees once a week. So we're not really adding to their workload. Um, but imagine how that, that changes the workplace environment. Right? You're, you're, you have to write something positive. You stick it in your keyboard. Right? So the first time it's maybe a surprise that the employee comes into work and there's this note stuck in their keyboard or taped up on their monitor. Um, and it says something like, hey, great job in the presentation yesterday. I really appreciated how you did this certain thing. And now the employee. Yeah, it could say we, you got a raise too because of it. You know, that would be really oh, great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's take it to, to that next step, right? So you're, you're, you're talking, you're, you're changing the dynamic in the, in the office. And suddenly it, it's not sterile right it's it's not just a place that you go to work it has meaning and uh, you know you're not this employee who sits down with their manager once every other week to discuss the project or how things are going or god forbid you're only talking every six months at, at um, performance review time right and we all know how much everybody both managers and, and employees alike love performance review time uh, no, but if you're, that, <laughs> if, yeah, if you're getting that regular, constant communication, not only is it going to change the employer, employee, but it's going to change the manager and how they manage. Uh, and so I, I think that there's a, a, a huge opportunity for business leaders to lead and use notes as a, a way to become stronger leaders within their organizations. Um, and the other thing I wanted to share with you, um, only because you had commented that you've been kind of paying attention to our family story for a while, um, I wanted to let you know that um, I have um, I have a, a spreadsheet of where I kept all of my um, my early notes, and I, I started to record everything um, because I'm a geek and that's what I do. Uh, and number four hundred and thirty four is want to do something your child will never forget, write them a meaningful note. Keith Jowers. Wow. Well, thank you, Gar. My pleasure. And that, and that has been, um, I mean, this, this spreadsheet is at least four years old at this point. So it's been in the database for much longer than that. Uh, well, that's what I've done for a long time is just encourage people and, and, you know, just a thought. You know, I have a phrase that says, if you go through life helping only yourself, you'll go through life alone. 
I created that over 10 years ago. I just said it one day and it's kind of stuck, you know, and now I see it back on the internet. And so it's just kind of interesting how we just, we all go through this life one time, but I truly believe in encouraging our kids' lives. And Ariel, she has a little toddler and she's learning a lot from these parenting classes we're doing on Monday nights. So I think she's probably going to go out and buy a bunch of napkins here in the next couple of years and <laughs> store them up. Actually, she, I am. I'm thinking about doing it, yeah. <laughs> writing at 365. So when she actually starts going to school, she'll have something in her, her lunchbox to go to school with. So that's just incredible. I'm just so blessed to be here. And wow. Keith, wow, what a wonderful gift. Thank you that, so much, Garth. I can yeah. see that. Just like Keith up. That's amazing. My heart's yeah. going out to you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. We're going to be wrapping up in just a few moments. And uh, <laughs> Garth, I know that there's something that's very special to you also, and that's how your faith has played into all this, right? And trusting God for those every day that you get up. Uh, I had heard you talking on one of your interviews with, I think it was EWTN, I believe it was, and how I, I think an interview you did with them, and, and you were talking about that. Would you mind sharing for just a couple minutes on that? Oh, absolutely. Sure. I, um, you know, what's interesting for me is that I've never been very comfortable talking about my faith in public. Uh, I grew up in an Irish Catholic household in a very small town, and so I practiced faith, but I didn't, I don't think I really understood it back then. Mm -hmm. uh, I was an altar boy, briefly considered the priesthood um, until I discovered girls. Uh, you know, I think, I think all Irish Catholic boys kind of grow up in that, in, in a very similar manner. And, um, and then as I've grown up, I just kind of, I, I think I was um, phoning it in for a while. Um, I'd go to church or I'd not. Um, I'd participate or I'd not. And, um, and even after Emma was born, I wouldn't say that I really felt comfortable with, with my relationship with God. And that's probably because if I'm being honest with myself, I didn't have a very good relationship with him. Hmm. And, um, and then I got sick hmm. and, um, and I had a really bad relationship with him for a long time. And I was really angry with God. Um, not for myself, um, but I was, I was bitter and angry about this potential future I saw with Emma growing up without a dad. And it really ate at my heart. And um, through, the, through the, the grace of, of uh, my, my faith community and my church and God, um, I was diagnosed with cancer my second time and sat down with my parish priest who had also recently been diagnosed with that similar type of a cancer. And uh, we were just talking in his office and he, he asked me, he said, Garth, you know, are you angry with God? And so here I am, I'm sitting in the priest's office and he asked me this loaded question. And I think to myself, okay, I'm either going to lie, which definitely not a good thing, <laughs> or I'm going to tell the truth and get struck down by lightning, right? So it's, it's, it's not a win-win situation. It's lose-lose. And, um, and so I just start crying um, because the answer was, yes, I was really angry with God. And I just couldn't say it. I couldn't bring myself to say it. And, and Father Dan said something to me that I've carried with me ever since then, which is, you know, it's, it's okay to be angry with him. He's got broad shoulders and he can carry that anger. And I thought, holy cow, I've never quite thought about it that way. And I started to be less angry. And um, what, there, there was a, a member of my church who asked me to become a Knights of Columbus. Um, and for those of you who don't know, the Knights of Columbus is a fraternal Catholic organization of men, kind of like the Moose Lodge or the Lions Club. Um, but it's, it's centered typically within a church community. And all we do is help the community through volunteer hours, whether it's manning the kitchen for a funeral service or um, doing traffic for a, a Down syndrome walk or you name it. Um, and so I started participating in volunteer activities with these men 
And I got to thinking, you know, my cancer isn't all that bad because I was focusing on helping other people. Mm. And then here's, here's the amazing thing that happened. Once I stopped focusing on my own illness, and this is, this is going to, this will challenge a lot of your, your viewers. I know it. Um, I, I used to pray every night when I took my chemo, I, 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 you know, I take my chemo generally around seven o'clock. Um, I would say a short prayer for healing, take my medicine, um, hopefully not get sick and, and go to bed shortly after. And, um, and that wasn't working, right? So I was praying for healing and I got a little bit of healing. We saw some good reduction in the first 90 days, but in the subsequent two years and three months since that first time, um, we haven't seen any change. So no growth, no spread, but I still have cancer. Mm. And so I stopped praying for healing because I, I felt like, okay, I'm wasting my time praying for healing because I'm not getting it. And, and it's frustrating and I'm not going to do this. And I sat to, to listening to God at that point. And I shut up myself because I was making too much noise. And over the course of a couple of years, I got to see God play in my life. And I got to see him direct me. And I realized that God had answered my prayers. I just didn't like the answer he gave me, which was, hey, Garth, you know, I hear you. Not yet. I've got your back and I love you dearly, but I need you to listen. Garth with cancer talks to people differently than Garth who could be healed. Garth with cancer has more opportunities to talk to parents about writing notes to their children. He has more opportunities to talk to other cancer patients about how to manage their illness and, and get through their illness um, unscathed, or at least you know to the best of their ability. So Garth with cancer is a faithful servant of mine, and I need you to walk this path. Hmm. And... I recognize that I don't have to like the path to walk it. So it's my job as a faithful servant to walk that path. Hmm. Wow. What an incredible message. Wow. It sure was. And, and Garth, I'll tell you, we're, we're going to wrap this one up. I, it, and as I begin to close this down, I want to ask you one other question. And then you, and then I'll, and it'll come back to me. And then as I stop it, I would like for you to check your chat screen. If you go to the bottom, there's chat. Look, there's a chat for you personally. But I want to just ask you one more thing. What is the, in the next one to two minutes, that you could tell a parent, outside of maybe even writing a note to their kids, what is the one thing about parenthood that you are appreciative of, but that you could pass on to a parent uh, for their children to make sure their child looks for that safe place to come home to every day because they either had a note or they had an encouraging word or whatever. Tell us from your heart, what would you tell a parent today? So, you know, um, somebody told me this a long time ago and I can't remember who it was or, or where it came from, but um, kids today, uh, they don't care about quality time. They care about quantity time. Mm. And, one of the things that we took on as parents when we decided to have children is that we decided to have children, right? So these kids are part of our lives and they are our responsibility to get from toddlerhood, you know, infant to adulthood. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be there and you don't have to be great, right? I, I am, I, ask my daughter, I am at, at times a mediocre dad. And, 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 um, and I think I'm okay with that because I'm always a dad. That's right. That title never, ever, ever goes away. Wow. Well, I agree with you. 
I think that uh, that's what being a, a parent for life, regardless dad or mom, is all about. We uh, <clears throat> we we just recently published some things that said that we our goal is basically for you to get fired as a parent, but hired as a consultant for life. You know, we want to be around. We want to be able to, to encourage them. But you started early, and that's what I have told parents for a long time, uh, regardless of what it is, just to start early encouraging them because, you know, it has to be the safest place is that home. And I work with thousands or thousands, hundreds of kids in my 10 year or 18 years working with them in the school system as a police officer, where home was not the safest place. So what you've done, Garth, is you, you've created not, you, you haven't just changed Emma, you've changed many people down the road because of what you've done. But you've changed through your, I mean, your grandchildren are going to be affected by this and on and on and on because you're just passing it on. And I commend you for it. You said something earlier. You said, you know, this is special. Or you, that M, I think, said that the note was special or something uh, to that effect, I remember. But I wrote down something on a napkin and I said it's special because, there you go, it came from her dad. All right. And. I tell you, you and I need to talk afterwards uh, because I'm t <laughs> you and I need to follow up and talk some dad to dad stuff because I think Dads for Life is going to make a part of what you do for our, our ministry and what we do. Uh, from now on, when I go places, um, we're, we're just going to be shouting your praise. Not that you want the praise, but you know what I'm saying. Tell your story, basically. And uh, I so, so I wrote the bottom of the note. I said, Garth, you are definitely a dad for life, and we appreciate that. So, all right, as we follow up, uh, finish it up here, we're going to be closing this one out because, man, this is good. This is be this one's going to be one for the books, Garth, I can tell you that. But uh, I'm going to end out on a, uh, uh, the song that, that I was playing earlier when we started tonight, and that is Rascal Flatts, My Wish, because our wish is for our kids to definitely have a, uh, have a great life because we're trying to be involved in their lives. So I want you to be encouraged and I want you to be enhanced and enrich your life so you can go out and touch others. But make sure you start with your kids. They need it the most. This is Dr. Keith from currently in the UK tonight and for two more weeks. And this is my friend down in that corner, Ariel Wheeler from Australia. Garth, I don't even know where you're from, what part of the region you're from. I'm currently living in Richmond, Virginia. No way. Oh, my yes, goodness, sir. we have got to talk. So, and uh, anyway, folks, this is Dr. Keith with Dads for Life saying go out and encourage, enhance, and enrich someone's life today, starting with your kids because they need it the most. But we are so honored to have had on our guest tonight, Mr. Garth Callahan, the author of Napkin Notes and the original creator of Napkin Notes that has started a movement not only in, his, in, our, in the USA but all over the world. And we applaud you, sir. Thank you very much for joining one of us tonight. And we will see you next week. I uh, guess I'll still be in the UK. we got to figure out why something's going on. Because you know what? It's uh, like almost 1 o'clock in the morning here for me right now. So, But uh, my schedule is going to allow me to sleep in a little bit tomorrow. So God bless you, Garth. Thank you, sir. Did you, get, did you catch the note at the bottom? Uh, I sure did, yes. Okay. All right, guys. We'll see you all later. Thank you for all our guests, all of our Periscope guests. We had, we had a crash. I don't know what happened to it, but we'll be reposting this on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page, and all over the place that we are on the web. God bless you, folks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.